Hello again, and welcome to Mr. Henning's class video about vertical angles and linear pairs. Our learning goal for this video is that you will be able to identify and describe vertical angles and linear pairs, and use them and their properties to solve related problems. Okay, so here we go. We'll start with vertical angles. Vertical angles are on opposite sides of intersecting lines, such as in this picture right here. So, in this picture, there are two sets of vertical angles. One set are these two right here. They are on opposite sides of those intersecting lines. So these angles, angle AOI and angle EOU, are vertical angles. But we also have ang vertical angles on different sides of the intersection being this one and that one. That would be angle AOE that's vertical to angle IOU. So in this picture we have two sets of vertical angles that are on opposite sides. One of the key properties of vertical angles is described by the vertical angles theorem. This is a very simple theorem stating that simply vertical angles are congruent to each other. Now, why is this the case? Well, one way you can look at it is that let's take these vertical angles right here. They're on opposite sides of the intersecting lines, but through the middle I could draw a line of symmetry for this picture. Okay. In this case, anything on the opposite side of the line of symmetry is the same. So, these angles are congruent. Similarly, for the other set, there is also a line of symmetry. So, for this set of vertical angles, there is a horizontal line of symmetry. Regardless of the way the lines intersect, you always create two sets of congruent vertical angles. This is not the official reason, according to geometric proof for the vertical angles theorem, but we'll get to that later. Okay, so let's look at an example. Here we're look, looking to find the measure of angle EOU. This angle EOU is congruent to the vertical angle on the opposite side, AOI. Because they are congruent, they must have the same measure. So we could say 5x plus 6 is going to be equal to 7x minus 8, because their measures are the same. There, I just have an equation to solve. I want to get all the x's onto one side, so I'll subtract the 5x to put all the x's onto the right side. This would leave me with 6 equals 2x minus 8. Okay, moving the constants to the other side. I would add 8 to both sides. That would leave 14 on the left side, and that would be equal to 2x. Dividing both sides by 2 would leave me x equals 7. But of course we're not done. We're looking for the measure of angle EOU. Plugging this number x equals 7 into the equation, or the expression I should say, 7 times 7 minus 8 is 49 minus 8 would be 41 degrees. So the measure of angle EOU is 41 degrees. We could check with the other side. 5 times 7 plus 6, that's 35 plus 6, would also be 41 degrees. So we have pretty good verification that we got the right answer. Okay, so let's look at linear pairs. A linear pair is a pair of adjacent angles that are supplementary. So, what do I mean by adjacent? The word adjacent means next to. In the case of angles, it means that they share a side. So, allow me to draw a picture. If I have this angle right here, and then I add another ray, these two angles are adjacent because they are sharing this side. 
Okay, but those aren't supplementary, so that's not working. Let me draw a picture of adjacent angles that are supplementary. Here, I'll draw one of them. Okay, there's one angle. Now, if I want it to be, them to be supplementary, they must add up to 180 degrees. That's what supplementary means. All right, so 180 degrees is a straight line. So the second angle must look like this. Hmm, this looks like a picture we've seen before, doesn't it? Once again, this is, again, because these are supplementary, we have the relationship, the two angles must add up to 180 degrees. The supplement theorem, although it seems rather obvious, states, if two angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary. That's basically just the formal geometric language for what we just talked about. But at this point, you might be wondering, why are there separate definitions for supplementary angles and for linear pairs? So far, the only picture that we've drawn associated with that looks like a straight line. But, consider this. The definition of supplementary is simply that they add to 180 degrees. Linear pairs, on the other hand, specify that they must add to 180 degrees and be adjacent. So, hmm, consider a couple examples. Okay, in the first example that I drew on the left, are these angles supplementary? Well, they do meet the criteria that they add to 180 degrees, so yes, they are supplementary. Are they a linear pair, however? Well, a linear pair requires that they add to 180 degrees and be adjacent. These are not adjacent to each other, so this is not a linear pair. For the second example, are they supplementary? Well, yes, they add up to 180 degrees. Are they a linear pair? Yes, they are also a linear pair because they share an adjacent side. Hmm, okay, so there is a small distinction between supplementary angles and linear pairs. Consider also this alternate way to describe a linear pair. I'll go back. So, we could say that because there's no other way to draw supplementary angles that are adjacent and not have them make a straight line, we could say that linear pairs are two angles that form a straight line. Ah, I ran out of room. Oh well. Okay, so hmm, let's look at an example problem. In this example, we're to find the values of x and y. Now, there's no... I can, let's just consider writing a relationship for these two angles right here. I could write an equation 3x plus 20 plus y equals 180 degrees. But because I have two different variables in that equation, I won't be able to solve and find the, an exact numerical value for one of them. So that kind of relationship is not helpful at this point. So let's use the fact that there are vertical angles. Okay, I know that these two vertical angles are congruent, so I could say 5x plus 6 equals 3x plus 20. Okay, there's only one unique variable there, so I could solve for x. Allow me to solve for x really quick, subtracting 3x from both sides. That disappears. We end up with 2x plus 6 equals 20. Subtracting 6 on both sides, we are left with 14 on that side. And 2x on this side, dividing both sides by 2, we would get x equals 7. Okay, so... Now perhaps I can find the measure of angle Y. I can figure out the measure 
of angle EOU by plugging in x equals 7 to that equation, or expression, sorry. So 3 times 7 plus 20, that would be 41 degrees. Okay, so now how am I going to use that information to figure out the value of y? Well, consider this. In order to help you see the relationship, I'm going to cover up half of the picture. Okay, so hopefully you can see, and rotate your head if you need to see it. Okay, we have two angles that make 180 degrees there. That's the same relationship that I tried using before. Okay, so how would I figure out why? Well, these have to add up to 180 degrees. If this one's 41, then the other one must be 180 minus 41. Subtracting those two, I would get 139 degrees. Therefore, y is equal to 139 degrees. All right, so bring any questions with you tomorrow and be prepared for the video quiz. See you guys later.